Now, the third thing that I want to talk about, because everybody asks about this, and this is the biggest worry that everybody has, and I want to give you some peace of mind and reassurance about choking and gagging. Now, <clears throat> There is a difference between choking and gagging. A lot of parents tell me that their baby chokes on foods all the time, and really what they're meaning is gagging. Gagging is normal. Gagging is expected, and it's like kind of not handling the food quite well enough, and and baby will work through it on his or her own. You don't have to pat them on the back. You don't have to say, are you okay? You just let them work through it on their own. I actually found really good um, pictures of this to share it with you. So. And, and this is just from my internet searching. Um, choking is loud and red, or no, gagging is loud and red, let them go ahead, and then choking, quiet and blue, they need help from you. So really when I think about that, if it's loud and red, let them go ahead. Meaning if they're kind of like working through something and doing a little bit of coughing and spitting out of their food, you don't have to run over it. You don't have to get the big eyes because then they get scared and then that just perpetuates every, you know, and worsens the cycle right then. Instead, just, oh, it looks like you're having a little bit of trouble with that. Oh, it looks like you're spitting that out. Yeah, good job. You can just, you know, try and remain calm, although everybody gets really worried as expected when that's happening, but try and keep your cool if they're loud and red. Um, if they are, on the other hand, quiet and blue, meaning their airway is blocked, then that is choking. And usually their eyes are much bigger than that. And they're choking. And then they need help from you. And it's good if you're able to, to do infant CPR classes, infant Heimlich maneuver, or not Heimlich maneuver, but infant choking classes. I mean, there's certainly good videos and everything like that for those that aren't able to actually do like on hand, in, in person, hands-on um, CPR or choking. But, but, but if that they're quiet and blue, they need help from you. So I really like that. I'm going to, and I haven't seen that before, that specific rhyme, but that's really helpful for me to remember is if they're loud and red, just let them keep going. You don't have to do anything. If on the other hand, they're quiet and blue, then that means they need help from you. And that means going over to them, getting them out of their high chair, getting that food dislodged from their throat. The most common thing that we do is back blows. So you basically put the baby face down and do some back blows and that helps get their um, what's bothering them out of their throat. There's also this good little um, gagging versus choking. So gagging is red, tongue will thrust out, face may go red. Um, you may be here sputtering, coughing or gagging. The gag reflex is there on purpose to keep the airway safe and open. And so that's what the airway is for. That's what the gagging is for is to keep that airway open. You do not have to intervene. You don't have to get the big eyes. Are you okay? Are you okay? Oh my gosh. Um, because that will just make it worse and it makes them scared. And then they'll take breaths because they're so scared and they see their parents so scared. Let them work it out. And on the flip side with choking, their face will go blue. They're not getting air have an ineffective cough and that means they need help. So then you're going to start the baby choking sequence. I'll, I'll put some links in, in the notes here for this too so that you can check out those resources and find a place to do infant CPR, infant choking sequence um, to help them dislodge that object. So gagging is normal and common and you'll see that all the time. Choking is rare and serious and you will rarely, if ever, see that. I rarely see babies that actually had a real choking spell, but I hear all the time parents saying that their baby was choking on something when in reality they were just gagging and spitting on that. So hopefully that makes sense and it gives you some peace of mind. You will see gagging. That is normal. That is just airway protection and learning to manage those textures. If they do that on a repeated basis for, for a specific item that you give them a specific texture or, or consistency, then maybe wait a week or two and then try again. But keep trying because that will help them to develop those textures. If on the other hand, you um, lose your cool about it, which is, is normal and expected, then try and reintroduce it sooner because but you want them to see that you feel comfortable and confident with their eating and it doesn't over worry you because if they see your big eyes and if they feel the tension of you, you know, letting them have a little slice of banana that they gagged on last week, that's going to just, they're going to see that and feel that and that's going to impart some of that onto them. And what you want to do is try and just remain cool and calm and that will help them to feel cool and calm as you're trying these new foods, knowing that they will gag from time to time. They will very rarely, if ever, actually choke where you have to do anything like back blows or anything like that for your baby. So hopefully that makes sense and gives you some peace of mind. Now, as we move forward, I would love to know from you what it is from what we've talked about so far that has been most helpful. If you could comment below, if it's talking about what to do after purees, if it's talking about the allergenic foods, or if it's talking about the difference between gagging and choking, it helps me to know kind of where to focus in the future for these sorts of talks. If, if you share with me like what, what has helped you the most thus far.